screen actors, welcome to the angry video. Today you're going to learn all about playing anger on camera. And you'll discover that there are three ways. The wrong way, the right way that is not interesting, and the unexpected way that will make all of your performances memorable. I'm Louis DiBianco and this is my channel, Screen Acting Success. This is where you come every Friday for more tips, techniques and secrets to help you become a compelling, working screen actor in demand. If this is your first time here, click subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Stick around to the end because I'm giving away free training that you are not going to want to miss. How do you play anger on camera? How do great actors do it? Those questions will be answered in this video and you'll see that this applies to absolutely any emotion that you're going to play. Let's look first at the wrong way to play anger. Indicating and declaiming. What do they mean? When you indicate, you point to something, you point it out. When you declaim, you're giving a speech. Acting is not about pointing to you as a performer and telegraphing to your audience See, look at how I'm expressing my character's anger, and it's certainly not about giving a speech. So, here's a line of angry dialogue on the screen. An inexperienced actor might read those words and make the obvious choice to shout. How will you know that it's really indicating and declaiming? You'll be able to hear it, because what it's going to sound like is raised volume that doesn't feel quite right because it's not connected, the words are not connected to any emotion. It might sound something like this. You disgust me. Get out of my sight. I never want to see your face again. Sounds kind of amateurish, doesn't it? I said that there's a right way that's not that interesting. And this is what that might sound like. You disgust me. Get out of my sight. I never want to see your face again. Now, that will pass in a, you know, as a real performance. It's not bad. But why do I say it's not interesting? Because it's obvious. So many actors will see those words and make a similar choice. And if it's in an audition situation and 10 people make similar choices, no one stands out. Now let's look at what I call the unexpected way to play any scene. And in this case, these angry words. The thing is, the secret is to play against the lines. So the lines would indicate shouting, snarling, really trying to show that you're angry. But if you're playing against it, you might do something like not shout and be very, very quiet instead. Might sound something like this. You disgust me. Get out of my sight. I never want to see your face again. Or you might decide that you're going to find humor in the scene. Maybe you're going to treat the person like they are a joke. And the dialogue might sound something like this. You disgust me. Get out of my sight. I never want to see your face again. Or you pick an action that would be appropriate to that scene. Let's say that your character is a painter and the other character is a painter as well. And that painter is hypocritical. When they're with you, they're very charming, but you know that they try to undermine your career that they're jealous of your talent and that they do not want to see you succeed. So you are tired of them and really, really angry. So let's say the action is painting. You're going to use it to express anger by making, by dismissing the person. Put all of your energy into the thing that you love. You're not even going to give them the respect of looking at them. You're going to throw away the lines and put your energy into painting so it might look and sound something like this. You disgust me. Get out of my sight. 
I never want to see your face again. I'm smiling at my painting, not at the person. I threw the lines away like I'm throwing the person away. Now those are only three ways of doing something that's not expected, that's not obvious, that you wouldn't recognize just by reading the lines the first time you see them on the page. What ways can you come up with? Put your mind to it. Let your imagination run wild and you will discover some incredibly creative ways and put them in the um, comments below. Share them with me and inspire other actors as well. Now, let's look at how two famous exceptional actors deal with playing anger in an unexpected way. And we're going to look at scenes from two very well-known movies. The first is Al Pacino in Godfather 1, where he plays Michael Corleone, the emerging Godfather. This scene happens right near the end of the film. In this scene, and here are the words on the screen, you'll see that Michael's very angry at this other person, Carlo. Carlo is his brother-in-law, and Carlo has not only betrayed the family, he has caused Michael's beloved brother, Sonny, to die, to be killed. And he has also abused his own wife, Michael's sister, Connie, by beating her brutally. Would you think that Michael Corleone is angry? I would say it's beyond anger. He is a raging volcano. That's what he is beneath the surface. And somebody could play those lines like that in this confrontation where he's going to call Carlo out. But let's watch this 52 second snippet from the entire scene and see how Al Pacino handles it. You have to answer for Santino, Carlo. Mike, you got a little wrong. You fingered Sonny for the Barzini people. Ah, that little farce you played with my sister. You think that could fool the Corleone? Mike, come in, son. I swear to kids. Please, Mike, don't do this to me. You just watched world-class acting. Notice how quiet he was. Notice how relaxed he was. Watch it again and look at his body. There's no tension in it. He doesn't start to fume and foam at the mouth and, you know, wave his arms in anger. No, he's poised, confident, and he does something else. He actually enters and says nothing. He lets that focused stare, that look at Carlo, say it all, and it's a dangerous look. I mentioned before that many actors are afraid of silence. Be confident, use it. We certainly get from the scene that he's very, very angry at Carlo. Now, the secret to Pacino's technique is that he never plays emotions. He plays intentions that reveal emotions. In this scene, his intention is to get Carlo to confess that he's a traitor. If he shouts and he explodes, he stands less of a chance of opening Carlo up than by relaxing him and making him feel calm winning his trust. And if you watch the entire scene, it's worth watching, you'll see that by the end of it, Carlo 
is dead. Now let's see a scene with a fascinating actor, Christopher Walken. This is from a, a, a Quentin Tarantino script called True Romance. And it's from a famous scene called the Sicilian scene. It's more than 10 minutes long, but I'm just going to show you, I think it's about 26 seconds in this first snippet. And here's the context. The character of Vincent Cacati, played by um, Christopher Walken, is confronting the character of Mr. Worley, played by Dennis Hopper. And he wants him to tell him where Mr. Worley's son is hiding. Because that son stole drugs from Kakati. He killed people in Kakati's crew. He embarrassed him. He really hurt his business. And, well, Kakati wants to eliminate him. And so, once again, the words on the screen would indicate a pretty threatening and angry character. We will see and feel threat, but you won't feel or see any of the obvious choices that lesser actors would make. Let's watch this scene. Do you know who I am, Mr. Wally? I give up. Who are you? The Antichrist. You got me in a vendetta kind of mood. You tell the angels in heaven you never seen evil so singularly personified as you did in the face of the man who killed you. My name is Vincent Cocotti. I work as consul for Mr. Blue Lou Boyle, the man your son stole from. Walken is always riveting. I've chosen another short snippet from the same scene, only 21 seconds, because it's a great example of finding humor in something that it's not obvious when you read the scene that you could allow yourself to be funny in it that you could find any humor in it but walken does and it actually makes his performance i believe more um unpredictable dangerous and we never lose the anger that is that is in these words that you see on the screen now Let's take a look at how Walken has fun as he interrogates Mr. Worley. What are you talking about? I'm talking about a massacre. They snatched my narcotics. I tailed it out of there. Would have got away with it, but your son, fuckhead that he is, left his driver's license in a dead guy's hand. <laughs> Walken is absolutely always compelling. And my promise to you is always that I'm going to find ways to help you become a more compelling on-screen actor. I would watch these scenes again, Pacino's and Walken's, because they are complete acting lessons. You are seeing, like I said before, world-class acting. And you can go back to your scripts after and say, what are the unexpected things that I can pick out that will make this scene and these scenes really come alive? Play them in front of the camera. Practice. The camera will tell you if it's working or not. Definitely go on to YouTube and search for the Sicilian scene from True Romance. Watch the whole thing because there is so much more humor that not only Walken brings to the scene, but Hopper playing right along with him. And the funnier the scene is, the more dangerous it becomes. And in fact, the anger gets intensified. If you've gotten value from this, leave your takeaways in the comments below so that other people can be inspired and more people will see this video. I promised, oh, by the way, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, do it now and give the video a thumbs up. I promised you some free training. 
On the screen you see the e-cover from my e-book, which is a complete guide to self-taping. It's 21 pages, gives you everything from acting tips to specific things to do to properly light yourself and how to get the best sound. I also give you a list of all the gear that I recommend to do the most professional self-tapes and I give you a complete diagram of my own studio setup which you are free to uh, duplicate if you want to. Look for the link below, click on it, download the book and apply it. Uh, you'll also find a link there to my latest online course, Green. No, it's not. It's called Self-Taping Mastery. That course takes a deeper dive into self-taping. And you'll also see that, well, you'll have the benefit of having me in every module, holding you by the hand, taking you step by step. It gives you the opportunity to reach out to me with questions that I will definitely answer. And when you click on the link and read everything that I'm offering, you'll see that I'm giving bonuses. One of them is a, an additional course on live auditions. It's an online course, and I sell that separately for $199. It's yours absolutely free if you choose to enroll in uh, Self-Taping Mastery today. So, for both of them, go below, find the links, check it out. If the course you decide is not for you, by all means get the book and use it. And if the course is for you, I'll have the pleasure and the opportunity to get to know you better and to be your guide toward greater success as an on-screen actor. I always like to end with this reminder about on-screen acting, which, when you think about it, is one of the themes that ran throughout this entire video. That the dialogue is important, but it's secondary to what's beneath and in between those words. The inner life that you bring to it. That's the kind of thing that you see when you see the experience, the unexpected choices that Al Pacino and Christopher Walken made in the snippets that I showed you. So whenever you have a script in your hands, always begin by you feel it first, then you say it. If you feel it and you say it, you'll probably mean it. And when you mean it, feel it, say it, and mean it, chances are that you will book it. Go out, create a stellar on-camera career for yourself, and let me know about it so that I can celebrate with you and share it with the world.